Namaste, Namaste and welcome to the 8pm podcast. My name is Yuvraj, you're watching Urban Pandits. This is episode number 8 of the Chronicles of the Mahabharata War, which we've been doing, uh, you know, with Sai almost every Wednesday. Today is Wednesday and that is why I have Sai here. We're going to continue uh, with where we left the last time around. So welcome Sai, Jai Shri Ram. Thank you, Yuvraj. It's a pleasure always. And uh, yes, Jai Shri Ram. Uh... So, Shri Matri Namaha to everyone. How is it's Bangalore? How is Bangalore's weather? <laughs> you Prash never lets me out, uh, you know, without that question. Never. <laughs> so, yes, I, uh, you know, I got wet in the rains when coming back from office. <laughs> are you, are you keeping well? Um, or is it still been yeah. raining there? It's drizzling. I mean, it's seasonal, right? I mean, it's mm. usually good to know that it's rain. at least raining there. Uh, mm. pe, uh, I think last time around, I did tell you, radio pe yahan pe announced ho tha ki it's going to probably rain. It didn't, however, uh, but it's uh, exclusively hot and humid. So uh, oh, wow. there is no there is no way you want to go out. Uh, unless you have some work, it's it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, we're gonna start with the Mahabharata thing today, you know. But before that, uh, Sai, you know, I had a couple of questions, so I was thinking, you know, why don't sure. we just address these questions first? Huh? Sure, sure, sure. One of these questions was uh, like, um, there were female warriors in uh, the Mahabharata times, like uh, Dushala, no. Uh, and huh. others, but they didn't really participate in this Mahabharata war. What was the reason? Uh, uh, as far as the critical edition goes, uh, I don't think uh, women's participation was even discussed. Right? So, okay. I, uh, huh. so, I don't exactly know, but probably endangering women women's life always it goes against the war code right in uh, and i don't think uh, you know it's just uh, even if the women were trained to be warriors which i think they were all trained at various levels uh, it depends upon the actual real battle experience as to how good warriors they were but basic training to sabko mila hoga you know they can't uh, any kind of uh, calamity can befall. Like if Subhadra Subhadra cannot learn to, learn to drive the chariot that minute, that second, Rukmini and Subhadra. Right? So, and being, uh, you know, being a sister of Maharathis or being a wife of a Maharathi, mother of a Maharathi, uh, it's almost, if you bolo ge to training ho hi jata hai. That... Mm. That part is something I am sure, uh, you know, maybe uh, except in some very exceptional cases where uh, some health or some issues would be stopping them. That would be same for men as well, right? Sure, sure. So like, for example, Vichitra Virya, we don't uh, find him fighting wars and uh, he was described as somebody with a failing health. Whereas Chitrangada, his brother, was a warrior. Hmm. He went down fighting, right? Uh, you Chitravirya actually told us the story of uh, Chitrangada and uh, you know how he fought another Chitrangada, and uh, well, unfortunately, he got down in the war. Sure. Hmm. So this was uh, this was the question, as yeah, you know, so the why wasn't the other gender uh -huh. taken uh, participation, active participation in the Mahabharata war specifically? You know, because they. Uh, because at one point of time, we see later down the line after the war, Ki Dushala and Arjuna, they are right in front of uh, each other in a battlefield. Well, yes. that doesn't happen. But, you know, the situation to almost came and Dushala was mm -hmm. actually the commander of her army. Yes, was because she... by that time, Dushala lost her husband and probably her son also. So it's her grandson that she is, uh, you know, playing a regent to her grandson. So now, uh, you know, at that point of time, she has to come herself and defend her grandson. Hmm. 
so because of the fact that there was no able male ha huh. but this is not a like what uh, uh, that was a part of a campaign where arjuna went and attacked their uh, you know their hmm. dushala's kingdom right as a part of ashwamedha campaign right so when uh, when you is attacked uh, i think i think i have some connection issues uh, yuvraj just let me know if i'm online because yes, you froze. are i see you here so that's all right okay i'll just yeah am i online yes you are can you hear me yeah yes 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 so when your kingdom is attacked uh, i think whoever can defend naturally comes forward you know across genders or across classes across hmm. a lot of categories but this was a war uh, you know planned and uh, you know mutually agreed and executed as a decider of who is going to win the kingdom in a neutral uh, place right who sure. you know in uh, in that game of thrones they call it some trial by combat or something like so it's it's a combat between the claim of uh, you know the pandavas versus the claim of the kauravas so they would have naturally thought there is no need to involve women in this hmm also we don't uh, exactly see the war women uh, being very enthusiastic to participate in this war you know like satyabhama was so enthusiastic to go with uh, along with krishna uh yeah uh, i think yuvraj again you are uh, uh, your your uh, screen has frozen your voice is uh, uh, bad actually my internet is you here's here's shall a fun I, fact shall i just I, leave I can... and reenter uh, you might want to do that but i can i mean on the studio you are all right I don't I'll see myself frozen. I don't see you frozen. Sure, sure, absolutely. So this was uh, one of the questions actually I got uh, gotten in the comments. Ki uh, why weren't women fighting in the Mahabharata war? So in my head, I was thinking, of course, and before the war started, you see, there was a, a rule, a, a code of ethics, a war ethics, which was sort of laid out by Bhishma Pitama. Isn't that right? so uh, i wanted to ask sai if that was one of those rules or war ethics which uh, he had laid out himself ki jo women folks are not allowed to be in the battleground so i just want to go in and check with sai let her come back online well in the meantime um, let me just ask you guys in case if you like this uh, you know kind of conversations please like this video also share it with your friends haven't subscribed yet please go ahead and do that here's yes and she's yes, back i'm back okay so i was i was you know just kind of thinking in my head and i was talking to uh, my viewers also um ki uh, just before the mahabharata war started sai you know there was um there were codes the war ethics uh, the war codes which has been laid yes. out by bhishma pitama hmm. isn't it so was it probably one of his uh, yes, yes. you know rule that women folks are not allowed to you know participate actively in the battlefield or is that is that how it is i can confirm it uh, you know in our next episode but anyways we are going to see a lot of codes broken now uh, in the next couple of uh, days so it makes sense for us to uh, you know uh, uh, revisit what was planned and uh, the fact that a lot of codes were broken just uh, speaks about the level of desperation in the war here i don't want to uh you know we already know who is who was on the side of dharma and who was on the side of adharma through the knowledge of veda vyasa bhagwan veda vyasa himself and i don't want to be somebody who challenges his wisdom but i don't want uh, in this war i don't want to judge people for taking whatever decisions they have taken because every decision on each side was taken out of desperation hmm. sure also remember we were talking about in the beginning of you know uh, the series that 
वॉर स्टार्ट करना इज वन थिंग एंड देन यू नो गोइंग डाउन दिप स्लिपरी स्लो इट्स सोर्ट ऑफ अनकंट्रोलेबल वंस वॉर इज ऑलरेडी बिगन राइट सो बिगन आई नो सो आर्ट वी सीन द सेम इन यूक्रेन एंड रशिया थिंक यू टू स्टीर यू नो स्टीर योर साइड टुवर्ड्स विक्टरी यू नो देयर आर गोइंग टू बी वेरी दैट्स द अल्टीमेट गोल यस वंस द वॉर स्टार्ट्स दैट्स द अल्टीमेट गोल राइट दैट्स द अल्टीमेट गोल यू हैव टू विन श्योर in the series whatever we have talked about uh, sai you know we have uh, covered the bhishma parva we are already in yes. drona parva uh, so grand we are in the third bhishma day of uh, drona parva now uh, drona, drona parva. had uh, two days of uh, commandeering the army of the kauravas uh, mm-hmm. uh, he started with a strategy of uh, targeting yudhishthira instead of stopping bhima or arjuna they figured out once they target yudhishthira and capture him then come to the negotiation stage agenda they will do anything to release their brother and that would uh, ensure the victory of duryodhana but that to capturing yudhishthira required keeping arjuna away from the front for which there was uh, the original suicide squad that is the shamshaptakas a shamshaptaka regiment were formed who took an oath to either kill arjuna or get killed by him so uh, fought the war with uh, from now on with a single mission to keep arjuna away from the main front of the war and on day 12 uh, drona almost almost succeeded in capturing yudhishthira except uh, uh, if not for the right on time intervention by arjuna he had already uh, you know fought with the shamshaptakas and dro- driven them away and got back to the mainstream side of the war and that caused duryodhana a lot of disturbance now uh, you know he could see that uh, drona was actually putting a lot of effort like unlike bhishma drona was intent in making him win But then if you are intent in making me win and there is you know karna also entered and still we are not able to win so is something terribly wrong can't we win this war now that, that pressure you just spoke drona. Off, right yes so now that pricks drona so he uh, he promises duryodhana he on tomorrow that is day 13th he is going to ensure that at maharathi was side is going to die i don't know who is going to die but at least one maharathi from the and they are going to feel the loss so he arranges the kaurava army in a impregnable formation called chakravyuha chakravyuha is an army arranged in a wheel like formation and penetrating the vyuha was a skill that is known only to four maharathis apart from dronacharya i guess uh, yuvraj is offline but let's continue till i can so only four maharathis apart from drona knew how to penetrate this vyuha that is krishna arjuna pradyumna who is not part war he accompanied balarama to the yatra and abhimanyu abhimanyu the son of krishna basically krishna arjuna and only caveat very much is that he knew how to penetrate the vyuha could stall the movement of heel to penetrate the vyuha not know how exactly navigate his way to the end of the vyuha you was not uh, aware of which he admits so you were offline for a while sure so i was just telling about how only four vyuhas uh, four uh, warriors maharathis knew how to impregnate uh, how to uh, penetrate the uh, chakravyuha that 
it's krishna sure. arjuna pradyum and abhimanyu with you not knowing how to navigate till the end of the view ha but now early in the morning arjuna was already called away the sham shaptakas and then drona with the rest of the army drona made this chakra vyuha and this was a challenge to the pandavas yudhishthira basically he is the guy who knew the answer to every vyuha of the enemy he was for the first time in the war he did not have a response to drona in the form of a vyuha so they decided that they break the cover and then abhima that he is going to lead the charge to break the and then he also confesses that i am not aware of navigating further till the end i can break it in order to enter it of war we we know the style of abhimanyu is of a you know surgical strike uh, general of today's army a uh are is finished the mission come back it has been abhimanyu's specialization you know in his style of fighting not like bhima and arjuna who can keep the war going you know all day long who can keep fight all day they have bhima and arjuna arjuna especially have has a rhythm of continuing his work. he is a savya sachi so you know when whenever he wants he can change the hands that can hold holding that is holding the bow and who which is you know knocking the arrows right and that saves him from fatigue yes that ambi dexterity saves him from allows him a certain rhythm that saves him from fatigue so we never see arjuna experiencing fatigue bhima of course he has a superhuman strength you know which he can use to intimidate the opponent when the battle gets really tough and he also knows there are you know instances will come across he knows when the opponent is better and he has to do something else out of the box but abhiman you uh, till I'm, now i'm yet to see i'm yet to see that i'm yet to see yet where abhima realizes it happens <laughs> on ha it happens on uh, once on day 14 i guess we'll see hmm sure yes so abhiman you then uh, abhima everybody assures him okay we don't need you to go so far and you know figure out how to get out of the vyuha just break the formation for us we'll take care of the rest okay abhimanyu is happy then abhimanyu's charioteer sumitra he cautions abhimanyu this seems like a mission that is beyond you i know a charioteer a sarathi always knows the strengths and weaknesses of his rathi he says unlike arjuna and bhima and you know the rest of your uncles who were you know they were born in hardships they were brought up in hardships they had a very brief period of luxury but they have been fighting wars of different kinds ever since they were born you know born shatashringa ashrama it's not it's not a luxurious childhood though they may might have had adventurous childhood but not a luxurious childhood coming back to hastinapura face this hostility face so many uh, you know assassination attempts the jealousy on the other side you have been brought up you know i know your fathers your father and uncles went to vanavasa but you have been brought up in the palace of dwaraka under with under so much care in the lap of luxury so here you are overestimating yourself comparing yourself to your father and uncle so they have not they did not have the ch- you did not have the childhood that they had even krishna for that matter no 
Krishna and Arjuna, both of their childhoods were, you know, filled with ordeals and they are hardened by that, which you are not. Interesting uh, so side to see to this. Uh, it's interesting to see these kind of conversations happening between a charioteer and the warrior, right? Isn't it? Oh, that's uh, I, I was, you know, we were. Conversation. Yeah. We would be just uh, thinking in our head ki, you know, uh, Krishna was a special charioteer. That is how, you know, this whole conversation came into picture. But no, I think, you know, all the Sarathis were equally uh, uh, smart and uh, kya bolte ho? Ke bolne you know, wale. Sarathya, Sarathya is that kind of a profession which encompasses a lot of skills, which needs a lot of strategization. You know, Rathi would be busy fighting. You have to do the strategy. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Right? In one of these podcasts, I do remember, you know, we spoke of what is a Sarathi's role in a war field and what, you know, does he do? How the the charioteer and the warrior, they act as a sort of team when they're in, yes. in the yes. background. So, so we sure. will come across on day 17, we'll come across a very beautiful conversation between Bhima and his Sarathi Vishokha. So, uh, you know, that pra- that practically gives a whole job description of a Sarathi. <laughs> mm. You know, so Sumitra here is cautioning Abhimanyu. Here, you know, Abhimanyu says, uh, today is the day. I don't know what is, uh, what, uh, I won't challenge your wisdom, Sumitra. But I know from somewhere that today is the day where the glory or you know that yashas is going to come to me if i can perform this feat so to perform this feat to save yudhishthira my uncle yudhishthira from drona and achieve that impossible even if i have to fight my own father if even today i know that's not going to happen but hypothetically even if i have to fight arjuna and krishna together i am going to do it this uh, was probably Abhimanyu's uh, exaggerated way of saying that he is not going to care if his life was on the, you know, life laid in balance, uh, hung in balance. So he says this, even today by some, this one, if Arjuna and Krishna come to stop me, I'm going to fight them. And then they set off. And then they set off. Here, a calculation error, I mean, that is my, that's how I call it, a calculation error happens. Abhimanyu is very fast. The Pandavas cannot keep up with him. You know, with their, with their formation or with their armies or whatever, you know, they are fall, trying to follow. The Pandavas cannot keep up with them, with Abhimanyu and he very over enthusiastically he went ahead broke doesn't look back yes doesn't look back broke the vyuha and entered hmm. and there is an elaborate description detailed description of the destruction caused by Abhimanyu very very uh, very much like how Bhishma used to destroy the Pandava army Right? So, uh, Vyasa uh, uses this metaphor of Garuda and uh, serpents. So, the way uh, it was as if like Garuda had attacked a whole host of serpents. The bodies were, you know, bodies of warriors were cut off, you know, slaughtered that way. They were the whole uh, the path taken by Abhimanyu was strewn with dead bodies of the Kaurava soldiers. And then Duryodhana has to come to the forefront to stop Abhimanyu. Then Drona says, okay, I don't know if this guy is going to stand against Abhimanyu, so we should all go and support Duryodhana. Now, Drona, Ashwatthama, Karna, Vrishasena, Shalya and many others surrounded Abhimanyu. 
to provide an exit to Duryodhana. Abhimanyu had, you know, he was mentally prepared to beat Duryodhana and, you know, and suddenly this whole group ke- comes and whisks away Duryodhana to safety. That is kind of, uh, you know, he does, he cannot digest that. Hmm. So he, yeah, so he decides to fight with everyone instead of turning back. He decides to fight with everyone and go behind Duryodhana. So in this endeavor, he kills the lord of this kingdom called Ashmaka. You know, towards it comes towards south, south of uh, you know maybe Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra. That was the king of Ashmaka was the first victim. And now Abhimanyu turned towards Karna. And his arrows were so blazing and fast, swift and sharp that Karna fainted. But he recovered and fought back with Abhimanyu. And then a lot of others come to Karna's help and Abhimanyu fights them all. Then he attacks Shalya. Right? And like Karna, even Shalya faints and Shalya's brother comes to defend Shalya and Abhimanyu's arrows behead Shalya's brother. Second one. Okay. Second one. Um, let me let me hold you for a bit here, Sai. I wanted to also understand because, you know, jo popular culture mein Ramayana, sorry, Mahabharata ka is episode ko dikhaya jata hai, right? There um, Chakra view wala episode. They say there were seven gates. Asa karke kuch uh, mention aata hai that first gate was and the second gate and the seventh gate was the last gate and after that he couldn't go out. What is Vyasa Muni? Um, how is he describing this Chakra uh, There's no detail in uh, Veda Vya, the, the critical edition. So if any of the local recensions have a detailed description, we must look into it. And uh, also there is there are a lot of... Uh, uh, mm, you know, guesses around the shape of Chakra Vyuha. I think there is a sculpture uh, in one of those temples. There is a sculpture that uh, speculates the shape of the Chakra Vyuha. So it is like a maze. Uh, like Bhul so Which is very tricky. Uh, you know, you can't say, basically, you know, generally the Makara Vyuha or, uh, you know, whatever you. Or think of it like that, be the, you know, slice of the limbs or something like that. The formation breaks and uh, they'll be for range themselves. But uh, chakra have any art as such. So you hide to break the axles of chakra. I think that can be disturbed only when the axles are broken. So to break the axles, you have to really get inside. The surfacial mm. disc, uh, destruction is not going to affect the view. Ha, huh? that is uh, that's my guess. Again, I may be wrong, but from uh, from the intensity of Abhimanyu's attack and his enthusiasm to go inside, I feel it is it's that. So you really, really need but to get to the critical edition of doesn't as soon as possible. But the critical edition doesn't give you. A, you uh, know, it exactly doesn't uh, detail the works. shape of the. Yeah, it doesn't detail the shape. It doesn't even say where, uh, which part of the chakra is which barrier standing because the other viewers have these details. Oh. But these guys seem okay. to be moving wherever they want, you know, just to stop at the menu. So I think, I think it's uh, dynamic, quite a dynamic. Uh, so here, uh, Abhimanyu has already faced two cumulative attacks and he claimed two lives and still he did not show any signs of tiring. Right? And uh, outnumbered, being outnumbered never affected him. So he is not. Now there is the prince of Madra who killed. So the Madran army attacked Abhimanyu relentlessly. And here uh, Abhimanyu reminded that he is just not the, not just the son of Arjuna, but also a nephew of Krishna. He has a combination of both, both traits. 
is Abhimanyu. And as he was slaughtering the army of Madras, Dushasana rushed towards Abhimanyu while assuring Duryodhana that he is going to kill the son of Subhadra. And, you know, I am going to kill that boy. And both Krishna and Arjuna won't be able to fight in that grief. And we are going to win. By then, Abhimanyu, uh, Abhimanyu's body was already struck by so many arrows. right? And yet, the sight of Dushasana uh, filled him with a lot of that war rage. He remembered what happened in the Dyuta Sabha to Draupadi, his stepmother. And he de decided to kill Dushasana for Bhima. Instead of waiting for my uncle to come and kill him, I'll take you know, I'll avenge my stepmother today. And his charge, his attack on Dushasana was so intense that Dushasana fainted and the charioteer of Dushasana steered the chariot away from Abhimanyu. And the Pandava army, they have not yet caught up with Abhimanyu, but they could see that he was you know, causing a rampage and they started cheering, loudly cheering Abhimanyu. And this, you know, they started, their uh, vigor, their uh, motivation and all was up and they started cheering loudly and they started charging. Now Duryodhana is so disturbed that he sends Karna again to stop Abhimanyu. Here Abhimanyu broke Karna's bow and flank. After which Karna's brother intervenes. And the new attack was really, really intense. Karna's brother gave a tough time to Abhimanyu, but at last Abhimanyu cut the brother, the, son, the head of Karna's brother. We don't know the name of that brother. So basically, everybody who came to attack Abhimanyu had to flee except Jayadrata. By now, we can guess it was midday because Abhimanyu's valor is compared to the heat of the midday sun, that scorching valor. Meanwhile, the Pandava host, now they have reached the vicinity of the Vyuha and there they are stopped by Jayadrata. Right? Jayadrata had once tried to... Uh, abduct Draupadi when the Pandavas were in the uh, Vanavasa, the last leg of their Vanavasa. And then the Pandavas foil his attempt, bring him back and throw him at the feet of Yudhishthira and Draupadi. They shave his head as a you know, in response. But Yudhishthira and Draupadi decide to let Jayadrata go because they don't want to uh, gift widowhood to Dushala. They have a soft corner to, for Dushala. So they don't want to kill Jayadrata. So they let Jayadrata go, one of their oversights because Jayadrata was, could not forgive that, uh, you know, that insult. So he did tapasya to please Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva, when he, Lord Shiva appears and asks him to ask for a boon, when Jayadrata asks, you know, uh, for that invincibility so that he can win against the Pandavas, Lord Shiva himself admits that Arjuna is the one guy who even I cannot stand now. I know he. Uh, you know, he did tapasya for Pashupatastra for me and I tested his valor and then gifted the Pashupatastra. Now he has the Pashupatastra as well as Krishna is by Arjuna. So with that combination, even I cannot win against Arjuna now. So I cannot give you that boon of winning against Arjuna. However, if Arjuna is absent for one day, you can defeat the rest of the Pandavas. This much I can give you. So that was the boon that Jayadrata got from Lord Shiva, which comes of a great use to Jayadrata on this day. 
right he wounded all the four pandavas at once so i know abhimanyu is really heroic in facing so many cumulative attacks so is jayadratha though he is empowered by the boon but so is jayadratha he is face, facing the entire pandava host and is managing to keep them away right so sure, sure. bhima bhima has you know be a, uh, for a moment bhima dominates he actually breaks jayadratha's bow flag and umbrella but immediately jayadratha takes up another bow and kills bhima's horses so that kills the speed right and bhima had to rush to satyaki's chariot and that uh, that is a great uh, you know victory for jayadratha right he successfully cut off abhimanyu from the rest of the pandava host meanwhile there inside the vyuha vrishasena the son of karna meets abhimanyu within moments son of vrishasena lost his bow flag and chariot charioteer and the horses took off and then at this juncture sumitra who is sumitra abhimanyu sarathi he steers the chariot away from the uh, crowded part of the vyuha so that abhimanyu is still visible to the pandava host and there is another victim uh, who loses his life to abhimanyu that is uh, he is called vasatiya uh, we don't know then there are other uh, various from the madra, uh, madra side i guess there is a uh, warrior there this shalya san rukmaratha and there is satyashrava you know they attacked abhimanyu uh, they they could manage to wound abhimanyu severely he is already struck by arrows from all directions he is wounded just that he is not showing the pain you know and here abhimanyu uh, invokes the gandharvastra and he routed the madra army again duryodhana comes to stop abhimanyu and gets beaten by abhimanyu again second time and then second time nine maharas uh, um do we have any description of uh, you know what gandharva astra is supposed to be like we don't have it so i i am not venturing to make guesses sure no no no, I, no worries so no actually as a I, matter of uh, fact uh, one of those all the divyastra Hmm. Aya, my theorizing about the whole divyastra segment is that it is they are uh, mantras that help you to manipulate nature to your benefit and each hmm. mantra had to be has to be chanted so many lakhs of times like uh, if uh, say gayatri mantra it's not a divyastra but gayatri mantra has 24 syllables so to attain the siddhi you have to chant it 24 lakh times now treat each of these divyastras as mantras in so many lakh times of japa you need to have done to mani- to make it manifest and how many ever times you want mm. to manifest so how many so many you know x lakh into so number many times. times number of times you can make it wow. manifest Right. Sure. So here sure. is where we spoke I a think... little about the astras in the last podcast. Um, yes. Sai, I remember. You know, a, a few days back, I was watching one of those videos, and I'm sorry to sort of you know deviate it from uh, no, no. what we are talking right now. But no um, uh, have you heard of uh, Praveen Mohan? He's a. Uh... Ah, I guess uh, you know he's uh, quite. He has quite a you know following on YouTube, and he explores this temple architecture and all. Right. Uh, sure. Sure. Sure, sure. Okay, Ditto, the same guy. So I was watching one of his videos like a couple of days back, and he yeah, yeah. Um, is again exploring one such temple. Uh, I think it was Chanakeshwara's temple or something. Um, so many sculptures, right? So one of these sculptures actually shows that one guy or a god-like figure is standing with the a, a flame thrower, the way we have it right now, hmm? uh-huh. and. Uh, he sort of somehow um 
puts it together with the, the agnya astra of those times or today's times i think here there is a distinction one is agnya astra and the other is agni bana agni bana i think oh. is the flame flame thrower and uh, not just uh, the historical i mean the puranic people uh, warriors as lo- late as uh, 17th century warriors of india also knew the art of agni bana so one of the warriors who knew this art was uh, rani abbakka devi who uh, who headed this uh, ka- coastal karnataka kingdom called ullal and she fought the portuguese with this skill they had the cannons of course she also had cannons they had guns she had agni bana oh okay yeah so, so uh, shooting of course shooting, the right interpretation will be agni bana not agni astra because yes, astras agni are supposed astra to be divine would be, and yeah, you know, bigger hmm. magnitude basically that's fire gets manifested uh, right upon your enemy then then it's obviously because it's an astra it's got to be executed by mantra it's, by it just mantra. can't be a physical flame by thrower the, yes technology. yes right. sure. here is where i guess the younger warriors lose out because they wouldn't have had that phase of japa that uh, length of japa schedule in their life like the older warriors here is why sure, we see sure. drona and bhishma excelling with divya astra so all their life mm-hmm. they have done the japa makes sense true yeah. sure <laughs> so uh, yeah abhimanyu invokes gandharva astra here uh, and the uh, roots the madra army then duryodhana comes gets beaten by him and then now nine maharathis including drona ashwatthama karna duryodhana kripa they try to attack him but they were all repulsed now comes to the forefront lakshmana the son of duryodhana and there is a terrible duel between lakshmana is a great warrior and there was a terrible terrible duel between lakshmana and abhimanyu with duryodhana returning to help his son by this time abhimanyu was drenched in his own blood so the blood was flowing freely from each of his wounds and he was drenched drenched in his own blood and in that state he fought lakshmana and killed lakshmana this one uh, style in abhimanyu's killing he can kill he kills only by cutting off the heads of the warriors somewhere he is not able to uh, whether he is not able to i don't know otherwise the warriors swoon faint right i guess he doesn't know or he can he is yet to figure out how to kill with other methods but you know piercing oh, the maybe because all the other warriors you know are, are sort of wearing um, kavachas and all their, that yeah their own yeah yeah cap hmm. happens happens so maybe the only hmm. way to you know uh, to decapacitate ah. someone will be to to, to chop off the neck off. Yes. and also you know we were talking about so much about Ab- abhimanyu style of war uh, sai you know uh, and most of the times we see in the serial or any depiction uh, with a bow and arrow was he also uh, you know fighting with other weapons such as swords or spears yes yes we will see him yes. fighting to the last weapon here hmm so, so till here, now he is uh, on the ratha and he is doing uh, he is fighting with bow and on arrows yes so now he has killed the son of duryodhana and duryodhana goes totally mad with grief that's understandable now six maharathis drona kripa kritavarma brahadbala ashwatthama and karna they surround abhimanyu and attacked him again he defeated them every one and then he turned upon the army of jayadratha and started killing the elephants of jayadratha and there's some other minor warrior who is killed called some son of kratha and these six warriors are still behind abhimanyu he wounds ashwatthama he wounds drona he killed brahadbala he again faced karna simultaneously he killed some uh, warriors called ashwaketu and martikavata 
from Magadha and Bhoja respectively. And Karna is trying, struggling to fight Abhimanyu. Dushasana's son attacked Abhimanyu. And Abhimanyu did not stop fighting. He, I know he is shot everywhere by uh, arrows and uh, somewhere there is a description that like a porcupine, you know, arrows were stuck to his body like thorns are stuck to a porcupine. That And just imagine the kind of pain he would be in if his drenched him in his own blood, but he's not letting it show. Mm. At the same time, we also got to remember that he was expecting his own army to back him uh, while he was penetrating the... He the was chakra. expecting, but that is not happening. But that's not happening. Now he's under pressure to perform just alone. Sure, sure. Right? And, uh, and a kid, and a you... kid of what, 16 or 17 years of age, right? <laughs> some there are some scholars who uh, guess that he is around 23 years of age and not 16, but that doesn't make mm. you know any much a difference. A lot of difference. Sure. 23 is, yeah. And uh, what happens next? Uh, Abhimanyu almost succeeds in killing Dushasana's son, uh, but Ashwatthama intercepts that arrow. Uh, and that proves costly later to Abhimanyu. We will see why. And Abhimanyu got, gets angry. He bring, brings down Ashwatthama's flag. And he pierces Shalya again. He brings down Shalya's flag. Kills two of Shalya's charioteers. And there are five warriors. Uh, Shatrunjaya, Chandraketu, Mahavega, Suvarcha and Surya Bhasa. Who died to Abhimanyu's arrows. Then Abhimanyu's attention is turned towards Shakuni. Then Shakuni says, I'll hold him back for a while, but you rearrange this army or whatever and kill Abhimanyu. Otherwise, this boy is going to kill us all. Karna says the same thing. Yeah, if we don't do any something, he's going to kill us all. I don't see any way of surviving Abhimanyu. Forget the Pandava host outside the Vyuha. Drona and Karna have a consultation. He says there has to be some weakness in Abhimanyu. I mean, he can't keep fighting like this all day. And Karna says, I don't care how he is able to fight because the way his arrows have wounded me, I feel like going home now. I just don't know how I am managing to stay on the field. It's the it's remember it's the same guy who is telling who has been claiming to be the the day he enters the war and the war ends. This is the same guy talking. Sure. He doesn't have battle experience. The real battle experience, no. So he says, as long as this guy holds a bow, even gods cannot win against Abhimanyu. That gives a clue to Drona. Sure. Yes, as long as Abhimanyu holds a bow, right? Hmm. So, as one of us is engaging Abhimanyu, go from behind and cut down Abhimanyu's bow. Okay, this is Drona telling Karna. Karna. Or, or, okay. Karna, which is perfectly executed by Karna. So, Abhimanyu's bow is broken. And I don't know why Abhimanyu did not keep extra bows. That everyone keeps extra bows almost. Dronato keeps hundreds of them. But here Abhimanyu did not have an extra bow. Simultaneously, Kripa Kritavarma killed Abhimanyu's horses and Kripacharya killed Abhimanyu's Sarathis. That moment. All the six Maharathis, they started shooting arrows at Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu grabbed a sword and started moving around in circles, you know, cutting every soldier that comes in his way. Drona breaks Abhimanyu's sword and Karna breaks his shield. Then Abhimanyu picks up a chariot wheel. You know, turning the chariot wheel like Vishnu holds Sudarshana. It was such a difficult sight to watch Abhimanyu that Vyasa says gods cried watching him. 
you know wounded drenched in his own blood hit by so many arrows and totally uh, uh, you know rendered weaponless he is fighting with a chariot wheel and it took a lot of time for the kauravas to actually break that wheel and then abhimanyu holds a, uh, finds a gada a mace and he rushes at ashwatthama ashwatthama sees abhimanyu coming with the mace he actually jumps down his chariot and runs away some weird things happening here sai you see you know all those great great acclaimed warriors you know seem to be just running away from the field um yeah. the weird things happening on the 13th day true yes and abhimanyu kills ashwatthama's horses and his charioteers and then he kills a brother of shakuni with the gada called kalakeya and here is where vyasa describes him like he looked like a porcupine with so many arrows sticking to his body right and now he leapt on to the chariot of dushasana's son and he killed the horses of dushasana's son too so that guy also gets angry he picks up his gada and both have a fight of the gada yuddha This, Abhimanyu and Dushasana, uh, son of Dushasana. We don't know the name. Son that this name has to be there somewhere. I mean, you know. So both have a great gada yuddha. After which both of them faint. Here, Dushasana's son recovers tad early. Right, and he deals the death blow to Abhimanyu on his head with the gada. while he is still fainted mm. yes this become you almost gets up and you know abhimanyu's body fell to the ground like the setting sun like the eclipsed moon like the like as if the oceans were dried up now with drona and karna committing adharma this are sanjaya's words it's like the sun lost its his luster and ocean lost its water that's what happened and then the pandava soldiers you know try to they flee and they can't see that they flee and Yudhishthira calls them back saying that guy died for us you know if you want to honor him fight till the last moment of today so they tried fighting so by, by then yudhishthira all, all already gets knew. the news so, you know. yes 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 and now uh, the site can it's not i mean the whole uh, both the armies are of reduced size and further shamshapta kas are away but so i don't think uh, the site of is a problem just yeah. guessing so unless it's something is very crowded or something like that that day that time the sun set the pandavas tried fighting but nothing happened much happened and the sun set for the day uh that's when yudhishthira in to grief saying i sent abhimanyu to death today you know i sent this 16 year old to death after some time arjuna returns and nobody has the courage to break that news to him so he is asking why i mean arjuna had a great day rooting the shamshaptakas he's returned happy now he first wants Were to know killed in the battle or a lot of them hmm then sure. he returns happy he's like okay what's wrong why are everyone so sad did drona capture yudhishthira don't tell me i mean so what happened is bhima Dimana Kulasa Deva, are they fine? Is Satyaki fine? 
you know never once he thought of abhimanyu you know only when he comes to the camp he's guessing 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 is that guy fine is this guy fine what happened to the sons of draupadi are they all the five of them are they safe what happened to ghatotkacha and ha abhi tak abhimanyu kyun nahi aaya you know every day he would welcome me Mm. then he enters the camp and sees all of them in grief and that's what happens and uh, here uh, you know yudhishthira says you can as well kill me before you get to know the news because i am the reason why abhimanyu went down today and then one by one one by one they try take turns and describe what happens and then arjuna says what the hell were you guys doing i know my son is a great warrior he kept fighting all along all along don't sing praises what did you guys do and then they tell him about jayadratha that's when arjuna loses it and takes this oath saying tomorrow by sunset i am going to kill jayadratha wherever he is hiding and if i don't kill jayadratha i am going to enter fire and kill myself hmm sure sure so i know we are uh, at 9 o'clock uh, but here i have two details to add which we will uh, revisit on day 14 now after arjuna's oath uh, he sleeps well but krishna hmm. cannot sleep uh, he is just totally disturbed and after long after midnight he could not sleep and then after midnight he he sends for his own charioteer that is daruka krishna's sarathi this daruka hmm. keep my chariot ready tomorrow anything happens and arjuna cannot fulfill his vow i am going to fight and i am going to end this war tomorrow so keep my chariot ready keep tie all the horses keep them well uh, you know be well hydrated they should be just ready to join the battle every time and he gives him daruka a list of weapons keep the bow keep those so many arrows keep my gada keep my sword keep my chakra you know everything Daruka says uh, yes i'll do everything because you are my master and uh, it's my pleasure to follow your orders but i think you are unnecessarily worrying arjuna with you driving his chariot there is no way arjuna is going to fail and i don't know why you are losing sleep but i mean krishna always has a reason we will know why sure sure <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely looking forward to it um Well there there are a couple of things that you know it's been shown in the serials uh, about how um, Abhimanyu was killed by those people and it's strange that um, uh, I wanted to ask this question also Krishna is just not Arjun's charioteer you know who is Krishna um, there was no way Arjun had even been hinted by him that there's something wrong happening that side in Gado of course Krishna is Krishna So there's a beautiful uh, you know uh, there was I uh, heard this beautiful pravachana uh, by Brahma Shri Garikipati Narsimha Rao who is a Sahasravadhani uh, he gave a pravachana on uh, Kirat Arjuniya so so he tells about what is the use of pashupatastra he never used it even once you know because of the magnitude of the astra arjuna never even used pashupata and uh, the whole tapasya did was it useful to him even you know he couldn't even protect his own son right and uh, there's this guy driving his charioteer who knows everything and never says anything right mm-hmm. and the uh, yeah that is his leela and this guy's karma and he gives uh, you know the pandit ji he gives a very uh, nice uh, you know exposition of what is leela and what is karma we do karma desiring the state of ananda the bliss right that unaffected bliss 
So every karma is done with the desire to achieve that ananda. Leela is done. Leela is an action that is done while being in the state of ananda. Which is why every act of Krishna is a Leela because he doesn't have an end. He doesn't have a, a, a selfish in the sense, not the narrow definition of selfish, but he doesn't have a, his own interest there. So he's mm-hmm. already in the state of Ananda, which is why though there are painful incidents happening around them and he is pained by it, it's not like he's insulated. He is pained, he is saddened, he is, you know, wounded, he is, he experiences all that, but there is a side of him that is totally unaffected because he, you know, the divinity in him, right? He is always in the state of that Ananda. That is the enigma that is Lord Krishna to us. While Arjuna is basically human effort reaching its pinnacle, the best the best that can come out of a human being is Arjuna, with given all the constraints. Mm, sure, sure. Also, I Sure, sure. Uh, also about Abhimanyu, I had uh, read somewhere, you know, kisi koi old story mein hai ki Abhimanyu ka wo jo life span tha, chota sa, that was for a reason. And wo bhi kuch uska back mein koi history hai, Ah, that is, is uh, he is uh, believed to be the son of uh, Chandra. His name is Varchas. Varchas is the glow. Yeah. Sure. And uh, when, uh, you know, all the gods, they have uh, their own, their sons, they reincarnate, they incarnate, you know, as various Pandava warriors or whatever. Then they ask Chandra uh, to send his son. He says uh, he cannot part with Varchas for very long. So, you know, you can, I can send him, but for a very short while. Given a com- concession. Yeah, I'll give him a short while, some 16 years or 23 sure. years. You know, more than that, I cannot part with him. He has to come back to me. Hmm. So yes, yeah, so I can can story maybe huh. So one father got reunited with his son, and another father lost his son that day. So we'll That's see that. That's exactly what you said. That was what Leela. <laughs> so. On this, uh, on this particular, uh, you know, Leela, and uh, and it's 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 nice that you actually very in very plain simple terms also explained what Leela is and what Karma is. So, I owe it to the scholar. I loved that uh, exposition so well that it just it stuck is, to me. Is. You know. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I'm gonna have a hangover of it for some time. You know, it's pretty deep, and yes, you know, yes, uh, yes. it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be nice. I'm gonna leave all you guys with this particular thought. It's a beautiful thing. Um, of course, Wednesdays are Mahabharata Chronicles of Mahabharata War, and I hope we will be able to continue it for next couple of or three episodes until yes. the war ends. So, hope to see you on the next Wednesday. Sai, thank you so much for giving your precious time. And Thanks so a lot, Yuvraj. I was uh, afraid I may start crying on the episode today, but somehow I could pull <laughs> pull along. Uh, you know, Abhimanyu's uh, valor is something that uh, I don't feel uh, crying for him helps any cause. Actually, he is, he is the best. You know, he basically asked for it in his own valorous, glorious, valorous way. There was no way Kauravas would have sub. Uh, survived without resorting to that. So that was Abhimanyu. Sure. In uh, in a very short span of your life, you know, without doing much, even one single day, if you live the way he lived, you'll be immortal in the history. That's immortal what he also teaches. Yes, yes, yes. That's a great lesson from Abhimanyu. Absolutely. Sure, Absolutely. Sure. And lessons of Mille ka jo wo, wo hai na, that is actually happening because of you and every Wednesday that we're continuing with this conversation. Thank you so much, Sai. You know, looking forward to having another, another uh, sexy, another knowledgeable Wednesday with you. Um, sure. Till then. May 14 is my favorite, my personally favorite day of war. Uh, we see mm-hmm. what real Arjuna is. So till now we have just seen 20, 30, 40, 50 percent of Arjuna. We will see the hundred. Looking forward, looking forward to have, looking forward to have, uh, you know, uh, 
to to look at Arjuna in its full throttle. Correct. Even if I I keep continuing and comparing it with the you know the serial जो हमने बचपन में देखा था तो वो एक imprint छोड़ जाता है आपके ऊपर right you know so you actually sort of want to see things from a particular way. So even then when we were kids watching this uh, serial and जो अभी मन्नी का episode आया था we probably would have cried i don't yeah, remember yeah i remember <laughs> but... crying i remember crying mm. and a lot of so my friends would pass in this fantasy to you know travel back in time and help abhimanyu somehow you know that uh, that formed my bond towards mahabharata it's abhimanyu the link between me and mahabharata and the way i got obsessed with it like at the age of 6 7 8 years it was uh, i owe it to abhimanyu Nice. I had no idea, you know. I had absolutely no idea. So But of course, we, we we sort of. No, uh, so there was another movie which had a time machine, uh, another commercial mm-hmm. flick. So I somehow had this fantasy of uh, time machine being real, and you know, maybe I'll contact the army. We will take some advanced guns, bombs, and travel back in time and help other people or something like that. You know. <laughs> sure. Sure. Don't we always expect it when we read our history and see, you know, how history could have just taken a whole different course so, if one thing was just tweaked? Different. So, yep. Looking forward to have another Wednesday, like you keep saying, Sai. You know, uh, and of course we'll be looking forward to have the full throttle Arjuna on the day fourteenth. Till then, uh, Jai Shri Ram. Thank you so Jai much. Jai Shri Ram. Have a good one. That was uh, that was the end of episode number one three one, and the episode number eight where we spoke of thirteenth in the Mahabharata war. Uh, it has been amazing having this discussion with Sai. We're going to continue with this for next three or four Wednesdays until the war ends. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have any suggestions, also put it in the comments. Our social media and the support options are down in the description. Please go and have a look. in case uh, you know if you want to uh, connect with me on twitter there will be an option to do that somewhere in the description please go and check that out i will see you in the next podcast hopefully and uh, till then sabko jai shri ram have a good